Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar on funding sources. My name is Cynthia Chowdhury. I'm the Family Support Coordinator for the Toronto Region. So my role is to connect with families and help them out with supports and services throughout the Toronto Region. So I work with both English and French speaking families and you can connect with me uh, through the telephone, email or even in person. But if you're not in Toronto, no worries. There is one of me in every corner of the province. So don't forget to connect with your local family support coordinator to get more information on local resources. So anything and everything to do with autism, that's what we're here for. So today I wanted to talk about funding sources. So I know this is one of the trickier topics parents and families have to face. So we thought it would be helpful to have the more common funding sources all in one spot. So the funds that I will cover today will be quite general and brief, but for more in-depth information, please don't hesitate to contact your local family support coordinator. So we will list all the contact information and um, resources just on the resource button just down below here. So the first fund I want to start with is the uh, Special Services at Home. So this fund is generally geared towards families uh, with a child with a developmental or physical disability and it helps to pay for services in or outside the home. So it's one of the first sources I like to share with families mainly because it's open to all income levels. So with this fund, a family can hire someone to help their child develop a new skill, such as communication or independent living skills. Families can also use this fund to help pay for respite. So I know there are quite a few families, for example, who have used this fund, let's say, to hire a support worker to assist their teen by taking them to the gym or to the movies. Other parents have used this fund for things like to place their child in a swimming program or soccer program, for example. So there's some creative ways to, to really use this fund. So um, similarly to, to other funds that you'll see on this webinar, uh, the amount received uh, from this fund varies from family to family and is generally based on the needs of the child, the supports available in the community, as well as the supports and services the child is already receiving. So in order to be eligible, your child needs to have a developmental or physical disability and proof of it, as well as live in Ontario or be living at home and not receiving residential services. So to apply to this fund, I have included the application link on the resource button at the bottom of your screen on the left hand side. So once you have filled out the form, you, can, um, you will need a formal document that says, states your child's diagnosis as well as a letter that adequately describes your family and your child's needs. So once this is done, you can simply just send over the form over to your regional service provider. So it's really important to describe your needs in detail and provide a clear picture of what's going on. So feel free to touch base with uh, your family support coordinator for any help with any of these forms and applications. All right, so the next fund um, I wanna talk about is assistance for children with disabilities. And as the title suggests, it's for families caring for a child with a severe disability and helps to alleviate some of the extra costs that the family might um, have. So you might be wondering what qualifies as a severe disability. So it generally means that it includes some sort of loss in functional living skills or that there are extraordinary costs uh, directly related to the disability. So, I mean, it would definitely, I would definitely recommend to contact your regional service provider to get more detailed information. I would also highly recommend connecting with uh, your local family support coordinator. They can really help to tailor the language and word choice you use on these applications to better present your uh, unique situation. Okay, so with, um, with this application, caregivers can use this funding on things like respite, travel costs, wheelchair repairs, hearing aids, uh, prescription drugs, dental care, eyeglasses, and, and much more. So similar to other funds, uh, the amount received is really dependent on the family income, the severity of the disability, the needs of the child, such as challenges walking, communicating, and other fundamental needs. 
And um, to apply to this fund, you can also get this application from your regional Ministry of Child and Youth uh, Service provider. I have also added the link, um, the application link, in the resource page just down below. All right, so the next fund we want to talk about today is President's Choice Children's Charities. So this is a private fund and it's very useful. So it helps families to pay for specialized equipment or therapy. It can be things like ABA or OT, um, occupational therapy services. And to be eligible, your child must be 18 years old or less with a developmental disability. So the household income must be less than a certain maximum amount, and this can be found just directly on their website or by contacting them. So to complete this application, you can find the link, link down below on the resource uh, page as well. And you will need a proof of diagnosis, a proof of income, as well as a third party letter describing your needs. So remember, for letters like these, you can always reach out to your local family support coordinator uh, to help you out and to help you uh, guide you in writing these letters. So the next few funds that I'm going to talk about will be about um, tax credits that you can apply for. And these are just some options that you can discuss with your accountant in the next uh, tax season. So the first credit I want to talk about, the first tax credit I want to talk about is the disability tax credit. So this is a credit for someone with a disability or someone such as a parent or care caregiver who is supporting someone with a disability to reduce the amount of income tax they may have to pay. In order to qualify for this fund, uh, you must get a physician to fill out the application and state that you or your dependent um, have a uh, disability. So the next credit I want to talk about, I know it's rather brief, but you can always contact your local tax center. The next credit I want to talk about is the uh, Child Disability Tax Benefit, which provides a tax-free benefit amount for families who care for a child under the age of 18 with a severe and prolonged impairment, either physically or mentally or developmentally. Um, so this fund or this tax benefit is paid monthly to individuals who are eligible. So families who are eligible for the Canada Child Benefit will only receive children's disability uh, tax benefit if they are eligible for a um, disability tax credit. So be sure to fill out the T2201 form which is also available in the resource button below. And remember to mention all of this to your accountant in next tax season. So the next tax credit I want to uh, speak more about is the Children's Fitness Tax Credit. So the next time you enroll your child in a recreational program such as soccer or swimming or baseball or anything that's active, remember to keep your receipts. You can ask your accountant for a Children's Fitness Tax Credit where you can claim up to a maximum amount per child for fees paid at the beginning um, of the year during the registration period. So to be eligible, your child must be under the age of 18 if they have a developmental disability and eligible for a disability tax credit. So remember, as I said once more, that you can contact your local tax center for further assistance. And just remember to speak with your accountant and direct them to line 458 and 459 of the tax return. So similarly, the next uh, credit I want to speak about is um, the art tax credit. So the next time you enroll your child in an art program, remember to keep those receipts since you can claim an amount per child for programs that are artistic, cultural, recreational, or even a developmental activity. So this can include um, things such as Autism Ontario events that have a cost, for example, like an art class that's hosted by Autism Ontario. So some other things this credit can fund um, to help your child, things like to help your child develop creative skills, improve dexterity or coordination, um, music skills, um, programs to do with media, language, or even heritage and cultural related programs. So just be sure to direct your accountant to line um, 
37 on your tax return. And also remember to even ask uh, your local tax center for any additional questions. The next fund I wanna discuss um, is a Child's Voice Foundation. So this is one of the funds that a lot of parents don't really know about, they've never heard of it, but it's, a very, um, it's very helpful during those short-term urgent situations. This fund helps families when all other resources have been exhausted. So when you've tried and applied to other funds and aren't getting much, this is a really good place to turn to. So this foundation provides a one-time necessary product or service that other organizations and programs cannot provide. So they essentially are trying to meet an immediate and essential need for that family. So this fund can help with things such as small medical equipment and supplies, short-term home care or home therapies, home-based therapies, transportation for medical visits, dental procedures, specialized furniture, and, and much more. So to apply to this fund, um, you can request an intake application by emailing the address below, which is admin at acvf.ca. So the next fund I want to talk about is, is a really fun one, I think. It's the Access to Entertainment card. So this is a card that allows the person with the disability to get free admission or discount for their caregiver or support worker at a movie theater or other attraction site uh, throughout Canada. So some ways you can use this card, um, for example, in Toronto, would be places like Cineplex Movies, Landmark Theater Movies, the Toronto Zoo, CN Tower, um, Ontario Place, the Science Center, the Royal Ontario Museum, and much more. So for those interested in attractions outside of Toronto, you can get a full list of locations and sites uh, just by contacting Easter Seals. So there's a small cost to this membership, but in order to apply, just fill out the application listed uh, below on the resource page. So the next fund we want to discuss today is the Incontinence Supplies Grant Program. So if you're a family who's finding that you're spending quite a bit on diapers, on incontinence pads and supplies, then this is a great program for you. So this is a program for children and youth between the ages of 3 and 18 with a diagnosed uh, chronic disability that results in incontinence issues or uh, challenges that last more than six months. So to be eligible, the child must have an Ontario health card, they must reside in Ontario, and the application must be signed by a medical uh, practitioner in Ontario. So you can also find this application, application um, just down below in the resource page. So similarly, uh, the next fund is, uh, is called the Assistive De Devices Program. So this program helps to fund equipment and supplies related to long-term disabilities. Um, it can help with things uh, such as wheelchairs or hearing aids. Um, the supplier will cover 75% of the equipments on, on these supplies. However, the family is responsible for paying 25% when purchasing the item. So to qualify, the individual must have a disability requiring the equipment or supplies for six months or longer. So these are some of the things that you can use, um, you can help to pay for using this fund. Things like mobility aids, hearing devices, communication aids, visual aids, uh, diabetic equipment, and, and quite a bit more. So to apply, visit the link below in the resource page. So this brings us um, to our last funding section, and it's the Autism Ontario Reimbursement Funds. So there's two every year, uh, one for March break and one for the summertime. Um, the March break reimbursement program is for families living in Ontario with a child or youth with ASD who is receiving one-to-one -one support during the March break. This can be respite or a March break camp program. And the other program is Autism Ontario Summer One-to-One -one Support Worker Reimbursement Fund. And similarly, it's open to all families with children 
um, aged uh, 0 to 18 who are receiving services for one-to-one -one support through a summer camp or a recreational summer program. So recipients of this fund are chosen through random selection. And this is a reimbursement program, meaning um, there's a good chance that caregivers will probably pay for the camp or the program before re receiving the actual reimbursement. So to apply for the reimbursement fund, visit our website, autismontario.com camp. You can also sign up for our e-news to get up-to-date information. Well, this brings us to the end of our presentation. We hope you were able to gather a better idea of what funds are available in the province. I know the information presented here was pretty brief in general, but remember that you can always connect with your local family support coordinators to get more information on how to fill out these forms and applications, as well as um, some more information on upcoming workshops, webinars, or community events. Thank you for your time.